Destin, it's been a while. Mind if I ask you a few questions? Well, well, well. If it isn't Joe Peralta, <laughs> that's it, you're under arrest. Oh no, heads up, fire marshal. What's that Nimrod doing here? Hey, Peralta. Hey, Boone. What are you doing here, you Nimrod? Uh, there was a fire. Big question is, what are you doing here? What, did somebody call in a missing donut? Uh, actually, someone reported they couldn't find your head, but we found it. It was up your butt. You're a fireman. You should know how to treat that burn. Joke's on you, because this is a fire, which means it is fire department jurisdiction. So why don't you back off and let New York's bravest handle it? You know they only call you that because New York's best at spraying stuff with water is too wordy. <laughs> oh, well, it's too bad we all can't be as awesome as New York's finest. Which, by the way, sounds like my mom describing her dishware. Which, and, and she's dead, so let's tread lightly on the response. That's not fair. I'm so nervous. My hands are shaking and my butt is hella sweaty. I totally understand. I freaked out when I met my pen pal from Thailand, Munkut. But everything worked out, right? You and Munkut are lifelong friends now. No, Munkut turned out to be a 45-year-old prisoner. It was a really awkward trip. That sounds horrible, Amy. What if this is a bomb cut situation? Oh, no, that pen pal service is shut down. This is your sister. It's going to be great. You just have to relax and be yourself. But what if myself isn't good enough, you know? What if I'm the bomb cut? Jake? Right, you're right. It's going to be great. Just got to stay positive. We're going to see each other from across the room. We'll lock eyes. I'll say, noise. She'll say, toy. And then six months later, we'll be on The Amazing Race together. <laughs> Jake? OK, oh, no. It's me, Kate. Give me a hug. Stand down, man. Back off, dude. That's my brother. Oh, no. It's a mom cut situation. You're drinking a second can of seltzer. I need this to settle my nerves. Hurricane Debbie is approaching. My little sister, Debbie. She's a real drama queen. <laughs> the drama queen of the Holt family. What, did she laugh out loud one time? She's laughed out loud multiple times. Sir, you have a pretty low bar for what you consider drama. Once I used an exclamation point in an email, you called me Diana Ross. I assure you, in this case, I do not exaggerate. Raymond! Here, judge for yourselves. Here you are. Hey, oh my god, my trip here from the train station. Hey, I swear to you, I heard the cab driver mumble under his breath, you will die tonight. Is that not the most insane thing you have ever heard? I mean, can you even, Raymond? I cannot even. Hello? Hey, you're Bianca, right? Mm-hmm. I'm Jake. I'm a friend of Freddy's from work. I'm looking for him. Well, which Jake are you? Are you Jakey Lady Hands? Or are you Jakey the Jew? Well, it feels weird saying this, but I hope Jakey the Jew? Mm -hmm. Jake Peralta. Freddy actually said I should come by here if I was ever in trouble. Oh, OK. Well, Freddy was here, but he left. But come in. Come on in. I've got the address somewhere. Hold on. So did he say where he was heading, or? I heard about you, Peralta. I know you were the rat. Get him up. Get your hands up. <laughs> yeah. Lady Ham. Jake Peralta, NYPD. Pleasure to meet a colleague. Colleague? Dude, read the jacket. Homeland. We're not on the same level. Wow. That was incredibly rude. No, 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 no. I've always admired people who decided what they wanted to be when they were six years old and never wavered. Bus drivers, ice cream men, princesses. So when exactly did you decide you wanted to be a butt? Was it college? Law school. Just want to let you know that I went to law school. At Butt University? <laughs> what are you doing? I'm standing up for us. Don't worry about it. That guy doesn't matter. All right, everybody take their seats. My name is Agent Kendrick, Homeland Security, and I am in charge here. Sorry, John was wrong. He totally matters. This year's scenario, terrorists have stormed the Capitol Trust Bank building and have taken hostages. Noise. Oh, cool trick. I don't have a ton of free time to practice high-fiving. You just made fun of us for that. For practicing. That's the first time we've ever tried it. Here are your assignments. Excuse me, sir. There's something I'd like to talk to you about? Uh, one second. I'm busy. Oh, at the buzzer! Suck it, Chase, you dirty little hippie. Uh, yes, well, um, as you know, I've been here for four months, and I think I'm a model employee. Oh, no doubt, no doubt. You had the idea to install sinks in the bathrooms. I love that. Yes, what I'm getting at is I'd like to be assistant manager. <laughs> Are you serious? Oh, I just never expected you to be interested in management. I mean, you don't seem like the type of person who's really interested in leadership roles. Really? Anyone who knows me would say the opposite. 
I'm very hardworking. Yeah, when you're not totally blazed. I assure you that's not me. Okay, tell that to the Count Bluntula t-shirt that you were rocking last week. It was the only thing in Lost and Found. A child and his father threw up on me. Okay, I'll think about it. Management. Full of surprises, Greg. We've been assigned a new commander. Please give him a warm welcome. Hey, guys. Uh, I'm Captain Stanley. Ah, yuck. That sounds so formal. Um, Captain Jason? No. Call me CJ. OK, so that's all I got, unless you guys have any questions. Yeah. You wearing sweatpants? No. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, I am. I um, had some hot cocoa this morning, and I totally biffed it. I like this guy. Uh, if I may ask, how did you become captain? You just seem a little... Uh... Unqualified? No, 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 no. It's because I am, actually. Here's how it happened. I had an appointment at my dermatologist at 402 7th Avenue, but I went to 204 7th Avenue by mistake. It's like, numbers are so crazy. Am I right? Amen. Not really. Anyway, there was this big drug bus going down. I showed up, spooked the kingpin. He darts for the front door, trips, shoots himself in the stomach accidentally, and then after that, everybody pretty much surrendered very quickly, and they made me a captain about a week later. Uh, didn't you have to pass the exams? Like, wasn't there like an interview where they, they met you and heard you speak? Presumably. Hey. Oh, I'm sorry. I must have the wrong room. <laughs> That's OK. Yeah, wait, hey, wait a second. Do we know each other? Is your daughter Gina? Yes. Ugh. And you're that little man's father, Boyle. Yeah. We met at the family food drive. Oh. I'm Darlene Lanetti. Lynn Boyle, pleased to re-meet you. <laughs> what do you think's going on here? Uh, mix up something? I don't know. Regina's been encouraging me to have some romantic adventures. Holy cow. After that, the judge just threw it out on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> that judge has a deep voice, right? I'm gonna go uh, check out the food. Hey, bet you five bucks you can't guess three of the hors d'oeuvres they're serving. I'll take that action. Chicken satay, tuna tartare, shot glasses of gazpacho. Satay, tartare, no spotch. Where's the spotch, Hoitzman? Yes! Spotch! No! Well played. Unless you want to go double or nothing. I'm listening. Oh, nothing but glass. <sighs> I'll bet you can't guess how tall the Sarge is in egg rolls. 24, exactly 25 egg rolls tall. Celebration egg roll. Hey, man, that was on the floor. You're on the floor. 60 bucks says you can't remove one glass without knocking the whole thing over. You didn't say I couldn't grab the top one. <sighs> 100 bucks says I can jump from the roof and survive. Oh, I don't think you <laughs> <laughs> Just messing with you, Peralta. I got to hit the head. Oh, then we'll bet on who can shove more shrimp in his mouth. You're on. I got a big mouth, though. You're in trouble. Where are you? Picking up Amy's dad at the airport. Ooh, that's a strong move. Have you successfully changed everything about yourself as planned? Oh, yeah, you wouldn't recognize me. I'm wearing a sweater. I bought new shoes. I put something on my face called moisturizer. It's amazing. Did you clean your car? I did, but it didn't really take, so I just rented a new one. But here's the best part. I printed out a sign specially for him using his favorite font, Garamond. Who has a favorite font? The Santiago's do. All of them. Oh, here he comes. Got to go by. Hey, Mr. Santiago. I am Jake Peralta, Amy's boyfriend. Jake, nice to finally meet you. Me too. Yeah, look at that. You're a Garamond man, huh? Uh, of course. What other font would I use? Cambria? <laughs> <laughs> Amy said you were a crack up, but uh, I had no idea. Oh, it's working. What? Excuse me? Shall we? That's your bag. Sure. Oh, here she is. Do you mind if I slyly mention you're single? Do not do that. You won't even notice. Hey, you needed to see me again? Rose is single. What? Ignore him. We left a dry cleaning bag in your back seat. Oh, uh, I didn't see anything, but you can take a look. The veil's not here. Rosa was so screwed. Hold on. Don't freak out. You were the one that said that. That was before the veil went missing, when life was breezy. Oh, man, these look spicy. 
We may die tonight. You know, I actually heard about a guy who died while eating hot wings. Really? Yeah, he was terminally ill beforehand, though, unrelated. <laughs> I always thought I'd die at the hands of my own clone. Well, that's why you have to brand the number two into your clone's cheek. You shouldn't have a clone if you don't know that. Yes. All right, you ready? Ready. Here we go. It's nothing. Amateur night. I can't believe this had three peppers next to it on the menu. Oh, my god. Oh, oh, oh hot. Oh, so spicy. Drink the ranch. Drink the ranch. <laughs> yeah. Oh. It's weird, my dad's here. Hey, do you mind staying out here with me to talk to him? Um, yes, of course, whatever you need. Haha, <laughs> your face. No, man, you've done enough, get out of here. Oh, thank God, good luck. Hello? What are you doing here? I wanted to say I'm sorry. I reacted poorly last night. This is all new to me. I know, but it's also not new, you know. I'm still the same person I always was. But I don't feel I know that person. Dad. My fault, not yours. I want you to be able to tell me everything. I can't promise you I'll understand, but I'm trying. I want you to know that I accept you for who you are, and I love you very, very much. I love you too. So been on any dates with women yet? Dad, we didn't talk about my dating life before. We don't need to talk about it yeah. now. Good, good, you're right. <laughs> Your ex-wife is here. Eleanor? The destroyer of worlds? Why? Maybe it's nothing bad. Maybe some of your mail got sent to her house. Oh, God, I hope not. If that happened, she would be livid. Oh, well, just don't assume the worst. That's all I'm saying. Then why did you bring up the mail thing? I know. Hello, Chunk. Hmm. Heard you want your sperm. You're gonna have to go through me. Oh, no. This is way worse than the male thing. What male thing? Nothing. There's no male thing. There's no male thing. But it's my sperm. How did you even find out I wanted it? Because it counts under my name. Storage facility called me saying that you were looking to make a withdrawal, so I went ahead and withdrew it for you. I have all of your sperm. But you don't even care about it, Eleanor. I mean, remember? Oh, hey, Charles. I'll never have a baby with you because I don't love you, and a child's not gonna fix that. Oof. When we started doing the silly voice, I thought it was going to be more fun, but it wasn't. Well, I do not want your DNA. I want something else. I hit some dumbass with my car. Now he's suing me. What I want is for you to use your badge and your gun to intimidate him into dropping the case. Wow, that is so very illegal. He's not doing that. I don't care. You have 48 hours to do so, or I'm going to take your sperm, and I'm going to dump it into the East River. Please don't do that. And there will never be the possibility of a little pie-faced Charles Boyle Jr. Proud of it, it's me. Unique New York. I took a Toastmasters class to prepare for tonight. Seriously, it's gonna be fine. We're just gonna have some dinner, eat dessert, play charades, and then talk for half an hour about which of her friends are sick. We're gonna play charades? You wait until T minus two seconds to tell me that? Okay, movie, book, what's the thing for song? I don't know the thing for song. Hi, birthday boy. Hi. Uh, Mom, is something on fire? Yeah. OK. You must be Amy. <sighs> Let me take you in. OK. <sighs> I'll just take in this gorgeous front door of yours. Mom, seriously, the fire? It's fine. Things don't burn down like they used to. I'm just going to put it out. It's. Oh, here comes Bob. Please behave. Hello, Bob. Good to see you. And you. Apologies, it's inappropriate for me to partake in such informal conversation in front of your detectives. It's all right. I am equally to blame. Oh, my God. There's two of them. So, Raymond, what evidence do you have that there's a dirty agent in the FBI? Let's see the file. We don't have a file. You're working fileless. We saw the guy commit a felony. He tried to have a cop killed. Crazy hot cop. Well, he's a specific type. Look, the guy we're looking for was wearing a ski mask, but he's about 5'10", Caucasian. He's got a big scar on his right hand. We've been calling him Scar Joe like the actress Scarlett Johansson. What? An actress? I didn't know that was where that was from. Bob, I'm so sorry. No, I'll look past it. Okay. This is my nephew, Marcus. He's new in town. He's staying with me until he finds a place. He is 31. You're a terrible hype man. <laughs> and you must be Gina. I heard a lot about everyone. Uh, take it, your Amy. Rosa, Terry. I'm Jake. Uh, we're both Jake. Scully and Hitchcock. <laughs> hey, well, just came to get the keys from my Uncle Ray. Let everybody get back to work. Nice to meet you. Pleasure. Bye. Holy Moses. Bye. What? 
For you, that's basically walking up to him and jamming your tongue down his throat. Shut up. Yeah, it's Tina. That's enough. You're right. Sorry. Too far. Well, let me just add one little thing off topic. Rosa wants to bone your nephew. I don't know how to deal with all these emotions, Terry. No one I've been close with has ever died before. No tragic accidents to friends. All my grandparents are alive. How did you deal when Hodor died? Not well, Terry. Why would you bring that up? Carl? Mangy Carl? Yes. That is me. I'm Trudy Judy, Doug's sister. This is our Aunt Patrice. I'm so glad you could make it. Doug really loved you. Oh, he talked about me? Oh, all the time. He was so afraid you'd fall back into your old life. Doug made Mangy Carl an assistant at the architecture firm. He rescued him from a life on the streets. Yeah, I was down on my luck, not a penny to my name. You were selling your body for money. Did Doug tell you that? He said all your teeth fell out and your mouth was just a rotten hole. 100% accurate. Plus, you were sick from those back alley butt implants. Had to have them. Carl thought a plumper rump would help him get his <laughs> out every night. <clears throat> yeah, I remember having that thought. But the doctor just put a bunch of mulch up there and it got all infected. Dark days. Oh, I'm sorry. It's just so sweet. The mulch thing? And that's why I cry every time I eat my pecan pie. Thank you. Namaste. Look, in my defense, he didn't used to have that man bun. It was just a ponytail. I'm just going to write some of my thoughts down just to let them out so I don't explode. OK. Look, no matter how lame that dude's man purse is, Amy Santiago still had a one night stand. To Amy. 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 Yeah. Actually, technically, it wasn't just one night. Explain. Well, he caught me trying to sneak out the next morning. And then he started crying, so I hugged him. And while we were hugging, um, his mom FaceTimed, and he introduced me as his girlfriend. OK, so then right after the call, you broke up with him, ended it. Uh, How long were you with crying wedding band man bun? Not that long. I doubt he even remembers me. Oh my god, Amy Santiago. Ladies and gentlemen, the love of my life is here. Three months. We dated for three months. I know we've gone over this before, but I have to ask you again. Is there anywhere you can think of in that hallway where a knife could be hidden? Well, since I've already told you like three times, no. Why don't I just record it, then I don't have to say it again. The hallway, like all other hallways, does not have a secret knife hiding place. Here, you want to hear it again? Idea for a novel. A mild-mannered doorman gets bitten on the penis by a radioactive spider and becomes the world's greatest lover. No, don't stop it. I want to hear what happens. This is terrific. He saves the first lady, if you must know. Sounds compelling. Heads up, weekend crew. I feel sad for you. I love my desk buddy. Sometimes Detective Kearns and I leave presents for each other. Yeah, well, Lo Hank's a stubble monkey. I hate him and his face garbage. Why don't you just tell him to stop shaving at his desk? He denies even doing it. I don't know why. Next time I catch him shaving, I'm going to punch him so hard in the mouth he bites his own heart. Could that be why he denies doing it? Oh, yeah, you could be right. Yeah. The alarm went off before we could even talk. Oh, that's too bad, bud. But at least you have people to want to come and visit you. My family hasn't been to see me since my trial. You eat nine people, and all of a sudden, they don't know who you are anymore. Wait. What? Did you say eat people? Are you a cannibal, Caleb? Well, that's not how I would define myself. If we're going by what I'm most passionate about, I would say that I'm a woodworker. Why did you think I was in protective custody? I don't know. I guess I hoped you were another cop wrongly convicted of crimes you didn't commit. Nope. I did all my stuff and more. There's tons they can't even trace to me. The secret is eating the evidence. OK. This is just great. I don't see anyone from the outside for another three weeks, and my only friend here is a cannibal. Woodworker. Look, if you really want to talk to people on the outside, just get a cell phone. Yeah, that'd be great, but it's illegal, right? There's this guy in Gen Pop, Romero. He can smuggle anything into this place. Phones, drugs, big bag of hair. Why would you want that? You know what? Don't tell me. The less I know about you, the better. OK, let's find this Romero guy. Right now, I really want to chop down on his meat. Caleb. It's better be good. I'm a busy man. You just spent 30 minutes trying to win a radio contest. For my wife. The Giving Waste wants giving tickets. I'm not really Greg, and that's not Larry. We're Captain Raymond Holt and Detective Jake Peralta of the NYPD. We've been targeted by Jimmy the Butcher Figgis, the Mafia boss. We're in witness protection, and that is the full truth. <laughs> Good one.
<laughs> That's a good one. Just call the U.S. Marshal who handles our case. She'll explain everything. She? <laughs> this is getting crazier by the second. But I'll tell you, I kind of want to see how it plays out. So, you both have the mumps. Sorry to say it's very contagious. You may not want to be here, Detective. Oh, it's cool. I keep up to date on all my vaccinations. I'm immune to stuff you've never even heard of. But not immune to braggadocio. Anyhow, over the next several hours, you will more than likely develop fever, aching, fatigue. That sound too bad. Also, tart foods will cause intense jaw pain, so you may want to avoid sour candies. What? You may get painful goiter-like swelling in your neck and often extreme testicular discomfort. Okay. Cool, okay. Cool, okay. Cool, okay. Cool, 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 no doubt. Due to the highly contagious nature of the virus, you will both be quarantined to your houses for the next nine days. Well, nine days in isolation. Uh, sir, I'd be happy to keep you company. We could watch the 10-part Nicholas Nickleby special on PBS. Hey, there's a lot of long, quiet stretches. I do love long, quiet stretches, but I don't want to be a burden. Plus, I'm getting used to being on my own. <sighs> or we could be quarantined together, you know? Work the case. Yes. That actually sounds kind of fun. Kind of. It's going to be the best week ever. I'm sorry, did you not hear me say extreme testicular discomfort? Yes, we heard you, Dr. Bad News Doctor. Hello, I'm your new commanding officer, Captain Seth Dozerman. My motto is simple. Efficiency, efficiency, efficiency. Could probably just say it once. Are you making fun of my stutter? Oh, uh... Tricked you. I don't have a stutter. Boom. I've already established my authority through my amazing sense of humor. Well done, sir. Welcome to the 9-9. I'm Sergeant Terry Jeffers. And I'm not interested. I have no use for people. I find people weird and confusing. I live my life by numbers. You see this watch? It tells me how many calories I burn at any time. Question, how many calories do you think I burned walking from there to there? You, female, closest to me. Oh, uh, three? Three? Ah! <laughs> Try 0 0.8, numbnuts. I made promises to my superiors that I most certainly cannot keep. That's why I need you idiots to work twice as hard. No, 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 strike that four times as hard. No, 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 strike that. I need you morons to work eight times harder than you've ever worked in your entire life. I'm having a heart attack. Yeah, I'm having a heart attack. Get back to work. Get a doctor! I really don't think anyone in the crew would have done it. We're like a family. Yes, and as someone who's about to marry into that family, so to speak, I tend to agree with you, Sarah. It seems highly unlikely anyone from the crew or producers would be involved. Hey, Sarah, what's the status on the toilet seat heater for my trailer? It's day four, cold butt cheeks going on over here. I'm sorry, but this is official police business. You putting the screws to work? I got this. Sarah. You're a PA. What do you make a year? Two, three hundred thousand dollars? Thirty. Thirty hundred thousand dollars a year? Thirty thousand. Oh, ooh. And yet Cassie Sinclair pulls down millions sitting on her butt while you bust your hump running her errands. I bet that makes you angry. Angry enough to steal her laptop? My gut says yes. Okay, that's enough. You're right. He's not gonna talk. Sometimes I wonder why I do this job. You don't. Okay, we're looking for room 247, Agent Jack Danger. Agent Jack Danger. Wow. That name is a badass. Code for badass. Yeah. So badass. Ah, here we are. Wait. Cool guy, probably expecting a cool knock. That was incredible. Enter. Are you Danger? Jack Danger? It's actually pronounced Donger. It's derived from a Dutch word meaning prudence in financial matters. Oh. Jack Donger. <laughs> also cool. Have a seat. I understand you need a little help from the big boys here at USPIS. USPIS? Yeah. U.S. Postal Inspection Service. Founded by Benjamin Franklin in 1772. Undoubtedly a great man's greatest accomplishment. Are you aware that he helped popularize Parmesan cheese in America? I am. USPIS is the crown jewel of the law enforcement system. 1,200 inspectors tackling everything from mail fraud to the shipment of contraband fruit. And, of course, occasionally assisting our little brothers in the police department. Little brothers? Well, I am a federal agent. You're just the local cop. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, we're here because we found this key. Whoa. Yes. This sexy beast was used to open a type of mailbox we actually haven't used in years. However, there are a few around town that were never removed. Real buttes. I could find out where they are and send you the locations. That would be great. Here, my email is... Ah! 
<laughs> no email. <laughs> I'll send it to you with our mail, which is to say real mail, because email has put hundreds of my coworkers out of work. How would you like it if they laid off all of your fellow detectives and partnered you with a RoboCop? I've literally drawn sketches of that. The robot has a backpack that can carry me. Whoop. Guys, my dad just texted. He's in the building. Scully, stop eating. Terry, start flexing. Everybody be cool. Paging Detective Jake Peralta. Ah, Dad! How are you, son? Oh, good. See ya. Mm. Everyone, this is my dad. Hey, introduce yourself to your captain's voice. Uh, folks, this is your pilot speaking, Captain Roger Peralta. If you look to your left, you'll see me making your acquaintance. <laughs> Love that. Hi, I'm Jake's best friend, Charles. How are you? Pop quiz, what's Jake allergic to? Bees. And wasps. I didn't even include wasps. Huh. Wasps, those aren't even real. Oh, hey, Captain Holt, come meet my dad, Captain Peralta. Hello, Captain. Captain? This is super weird for me. Captain? Captain. Anyways, you guys, my dad is the best pilot. Oh, come oh, on. Tell them about Oregon. Yeah, this one time I'm in Eugene, I'm hitching a ride in the jump seat of a commuter jet, I'm sleeping off a wicked hangover. Nice. All of a sudden, there's a jolt and a boom. A bird. It was a bird. Yeah, we sucked a bird into our intake. Next thing I know, cabin's filling up with smoke, alarm's going off, engine flames out and dies. We're in a dead stall. I look over at the pilot, Sam Power. Great, great name. name. He's white as a sheep. And he says to me, I'll never forget what he said. He says, Bob has got a big old butt. Turns out he's having a stroke. Bring the plane down on a highway right across from a rest area. Get on the PA. I say, folks, coffee's on me. <laughs> what? Wow. Ugh, these guys are the worst. Hey, Stevie Shillins? Jakey P in the place to be. What are you doing here? I thought you were in the 124. Ah, I was, man. But then I arrested all the bad guys instead, and so I transferred to the 98. So dope. Everyone, put on your parkas, because this week just got a whole lot more chill. Ow, 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 ow. Allow me to introduce Stevie Chillin' Shillins. He was my very first partner and one of the all-time greats. Takes one to know one, man. Come on. I'm Charles. What? Uh oh Hey, what's up, man? I'm Stevie. We heard. Stevie and I were beat cops together. We called ourselves the Beatsy Boys. And yeah, it was as cool as it sounds. So y'all would just stand around like that? Yeah. All the time. Stop, 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 stop. NYPD. Yeah. NYPD, I need to commandeer this vehicle. It's a crossover. A, it's a crossover SUV, and you can't have it. I'm a cop. Can you please get out of the car? No, this is Schmidt's mom's car, and I'm more scared of her than I am of some two-bit thug. I'm not a thug. I'm police. OK, then name one law. Don't kill people? That's on me. I set the bar too low. Look, can you please just get out? OK, you can drive, but I'm not getting out. Right. Also, I have the seat warmer on. I don't just have a really hot butt. It doesn't matter to me. A perp is getting away. Oh, it's very hot. I can't believe this is happening. Thanks a lot, New York. You know what? If your city's so great, then how come it's not the state capital? But who cares about the state's capital? This is the concrete jungle where dreams are made of. That doesn't sound right. Where dreams are made of? I don't know. You tell me. It's your dumb city. Yeah, it's grammatically odd. Whatever. I'm sure wherever you're from has strange songs written about it, too. Los Angeles? Damn it, all the songs there are so good. Here you need some help with the who has done this. Squad, meet Detective Frank Dillman of the San Francisco PD. He is in town, and we were supposed to have lunch tomorrow, but I asked him to come down because I need an objective set of eyes on this. I can be objective. Then tell me, how do I look today? Normal? No, Dillman. Bloated. Thank you. Dillman is the single best detective I have ever worked with. Sadly, he was unjustly fired for investigating corruption in the NYPD. He hated dirty cops so much they used to call him Mr. Clean. Uh -huh. I'm sure that's the only reason they called him that. Because I'm bald? You think that's funny? I started shaving my head 20 years ago in solidarity with my mother who was undergoing chemotherapy. Oh. I'm so sorry. I'm obviously lying. It's classic male pattern baldness. But now, based on your reaction, I know every single thing about you as a person. That can't be true. It is. 
You're cooked. All right, let's get started. I want written statements from every witness. Personnel files for the entire squad. Of course, I need to have this desk dusted for prints. See if we get a hit on the AFI system. Somebody could maybe get rid of those pigeons. Of course, I'll need to see any surveillance video. Unfortunately, this area is a blind spot. The camera that covers it broke two weeks ago and hasn't been fixed yet. You really don't want me to see that security footage, do you, Lieutenant? Hmm, I wonder why. I was just stating the facts. I didn't do anything to the camera. I never thought you did, but now I know every single thing about you as a person. Everyone back off. Dillman has the scene. Man, this sucks. This case would have been the perfect chance for you to prove to Holt that you deserve that task force. Yeah. Maybe it still is. Holt thinks Dillman's the best detective he's ever worked with. So what happens if I solve the case before him? And I become the best detective Holt has ever worked with, and he has to give me the task force. Dillman thinks he knows everything about me as a person, but there's one thing he doesn't know. I'm about to take him down. Oh my god, he's staring right at us. Quick, pretend like I was saying something else. Yes, Jake, you were young when you lost your virginity. Thank you, Charles. Police. Hello. Hello. What's your name? My name? Milipnos. Mm -hmm. Can you spell that, please? M L E P Clay. Did you say Clay? Yes, the Clay is silent. All right, got it. Have you seen this man before? He was shot last night. Oh, thank you. No, sir, no, that's sir. ours. We need that. We. Yeah, be kept it. Gentlemen. What's up? So, how's it going? It's good. It's really good. Uh. Keeping a low prof, no contact with Brooklyn, no one's questioned our identities, definitely staying off the net. <laughs> right, Craig? Right. That's it? That's all you have to say to me? Yeah, I think we're good. So nobody's gonna ask me how I'm doing? Oh, I didn't think this was a personal conversation. It's not, turn back around and watch the movie. This is official business. I was just testing you because Greg is the kind of person who cares about his friends and can sense when something is off with them. Is something off with you, Marshall Haas? I don't know. I mean, I met someone, okay? And, um, I mean, it's not my husband. I mean, nothing's happened yet, but my entire body is on fire. He's Cuban. Is this still official business? Of course it is. Shut up and watch the movie. Yeah. Pop quiz. If Larry were married and everything was fine, and I mean, honestly, everything is totally fine, sure. but he knew that one night with this person could give him everything he needed for the rest of his life, would he do it? Yes? Yes? Good. What if this person that Larry met was young? I mean, really young. Well, I don't think Larry would do anything illegal. You know, it seems to me Larry has needs and deserves to have those needs met. Greg, you're really great at being undercover. Now you both passed the test. Marco! Vamanos! Excuse me, Mr. Chandra Sekar. We wanted to talk to you about Nutriboom. All right, boom, boom, guys. Boom, boom. boom. We're with the NYPD. Oh my God, seriously? You guys have to save me. Can you get me out? What's that now? Nutriboom is a scam and a cult. They've ruined my life. Really? You look so happy in the videos. You'd pretend to be happy too if you knew what they did to me. Testicular torture? Yeah. <sighs> I know you think you're badasses, but deep down you're scared. How do I know? Because I've been that same scared kid. And if you don't get your crap together, I'm gonna end up busting you and throwing you in jail. Got it? Remix, yo. Throwing you in jail. Throwing you in jail. Got it? Throwing you in jail. What's happening? I think they're laughing at you. That's never happened before. I don't like it. Hey, Jake, can I show you something over here? Sure thing, bud. I'm trying to send Genevieve a sexy pic. Just make my bubble butt pop. Nope, I'm out. Um, excuse me, pal. Take care of my desk. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Drop it! Drop it! Don't be a dumb dumb. Squad, meet Detective Adrian Pimento. He's been deep undercover for the last 12 years, but he's just resurfaced, and he's rejoining the 9-9. That is awesome. Rosa, come on. You can't break a mouse in half. Oh, wow, you did. Scary. You really earned your rep. Stupid internet. The network's been down all morning, and my girlfriend, Jocelyn. Right, she's leaving town for two weeks. Oh, is Jocelyn leaving town? Where is Jocelyn going? Dude, you forgot her name one time. It's not a big deal. You don't have to keep proving you remember it. <laughs> 
that's not what's happening here. I'm just saying it a lot because she's so important to me. Okay, what's her last name? Uh oh. Mm -hmm. It's Bryce. Right. She's leaving town for two weeks. I want to send flowers to her hotel room. Ah, oh, that's sweet. I wish Amy would send me flowers. Why is it taking hold in this IT guy so long to fix the internet? One police plaza sent him an hour ago. Huh. Why does Holt look so worried? What are you talking about? He looks exactly like he always does. To you, perhaps but I finally learned how to read his emotions. His lips are slightly pursed and he's blinking at eight second intervals as opposed to his normal 10. Oh my God, he's having a meltdown. Meltdown seems excessive. No, it's a meltdown, mark my words. Hey there, Captain, everything okay? No, I'm having a meltdown. Rob, sounds amazing. Thanks, it was a lot of work. This is Sergeant Knox. From Cyber Operations. He's discovered the reason for our network issues. A hacker is attempting to break into our servers. Not all of them, just the LACME server. Well, that's good. No, Captain Holt's nostril just twitched, it's bad. It's devastating. Props again. Thanks again. The LACME server holds clearance protected information, including the names of our undercover agents. If it's compromised, people could lose their lives. Okay, but isn't the server secure? Yes, but the hackers already used an ARP to resolve the host name with the DNS server. Uh-huh, ARP, DNS, totally. Totally following what you're saying. Right now, they're trying to get root access by connecting the OSI network to the data link. You know, I'm a bit of a computer nerd myself, but could you maybe dumb it down a bit for my friends here? They're almost through our defenses. If we can't stop them, they'll be inside of our server in 19 minutes. Mama Magalione. Good afternoon, may I help you? Uh, we're here all the time. Get familiar with these faces or get familiar with the unemployment line. I'm so sorry, but I have to check you in. I need a member number. I don't have my member number with me. It's too bad you can't just use my Amex black card. Oh, that's great. We can use that. You can. Well, you think I carry around my own wallet? <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. If you could just give me a name, that would be great. I'll give you a name. Pomplamoose Lacroix. I'm so sorry, Miss LaCroix. You're not in the system. This is ridiculous. You know what? Call Daddy. Daddy will get us in. Daddy, the man won't let us into the club. Oh. Yes, Daddy. No, Daddy. No. Daddy wants to speak with you. Gladly. Hello, Daddy? Yes, Daddy. No, Daddy. Daddy. Oh, well, good question, Daddy. Daddy wants to get this young man fired. What is your first and last name? <laughs> uh... You know what? Forget about it. You can just go on up. Fantastic. What's going on? You can't just come in here. We have a warrant. Boom! And that's a real one, not a prop. Or have you forgotten the difference, even when it comes to people? What? People is me. You used me like a prop. I thought it was pretty clear. Rosa got it. Nope. Detectives, you don't know what you're talking about. Found it. Well, look at that. Security cam caught you breaking into Cassie's trailer and walking off with this backpack. You know what, you Hollywood types make me sick. Detective. For the record, your show stinks. I've watched over 200 episodes of it and I've never liked one. Open the bag, detective. Happy to. I can't wait to see the look on your face when I pull out Cassie's computer. Just a bunch of pills. Cassie has a painkiller problem. The show tries to protect her from herself. That's why I was surprised she called the cops. But thanks for busting in here and telling me how much you hate my show. And scene. And that was a great example of a cop making a mistake. That's the kind of thing we can go over more when I come in on Monday for my first day of work. You know, you can forget about the job. But you're still gonna name a character after me? I even ordered the pressure cooker from Turkmenistan. So you're on a terrorist watch list now? Oh yeah, Homeland Security's been in my house. Yep. Now, this just needs to cook for another 11 hours, 32 minutes, and six... What the hell, boy? You almost killed me! I'm not going out in a stew-making accident! Terry's gonna die saving the president, or Terry's never gonna die! There's no way we can clean this up by ourselves! We're gonna need help. No, 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 no. What are you saying? You know what she's saying, man. Oh, no. Mean Marge. So we're supposed to come running to clean up your mess every time you snap your fat little fingers? Oh, no, 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 I actually can't snap. My fingers are always too wet. And I just thought, since it's your job... Oh, I see. You cops think you're too good to clean up after yourselves. Uh, no, I can do it myself. I'll just... That's I'll... union work. How dare you try to steal our jobs? So where do we go from here? Well, you know the old saying. The only way to unclog a toilet is to let it sit. You're a janitor. You should know that's not true. Boys, take out the trash. Oh, great. So you will do it. Oh, on the trash. I get it. Okay, that makes more sense with your tone. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Love you, Marge. Look what I found. Do you like it, Jake? Uh, yes, I love it. Real Cruella de Vil vibes. No, no, no. I'm not Cruella de Vil. I would never hurt dogs. I'm Perdita. Who? The romantic lead of the film. Pongo's wife. 
The girl dog. Yes, yes. <laughs> of course, you look exactly like Perdita. Oh my god, thank you so much. Hey, Debbie, hmm? will you hand me your phone so I can take your picture and you could gram this? I mean, the house, this coat, you're gonna wanna show this off to people, right? That is such a good idea. I do wanna show off to people. I just have to make a quick call. Hi, Mom. Do you like my mansion? Deborah Lynn, why are you holding a gun? Oh my God, Mom, I'm wearing a fur coat and that's what you focus on? I hate you so freaking much. Hey, what's going on? Why is the FDNY in our cop bar? We needed a new place since our bar, O'Brien's, burned down. You couldn't put that out? They probably started it. Most arsonists turn out to be firefighters. That's not true, though it is very common and definitely what happened in this case. I'm surprised you guys even want to come here since you have to take the stairs. I know how much you like sliding on poles. We don't like sliding on poles. We do it to save lives. It's dangerous. You can ask my best friend, Steve. Oh, no, wait. You can't, actually, because he's dead. Tripped through a pole hole, broke his neck. That's horrible. <laughs> Sorry, but this is a firefighter bar now. Although we might want to make some changes to the decor. I'm thinking some old-timey pressure gauges. Maybe an autographed photo of Dennis Leary from Rescue Me. You wouldn't. Wouldn't I? Check it out. You son of a bitch. Frederick, happy Thanksgiving. Huh. Please don't slam the door again. We have a bit of a medical situation. Well, I wish I could help, but unfortunately, I have a bit of a wooden duck situation. Excuse me, what now? Still on about the duck, Frederick? Years ago, when we moved in together, an antique duck decoy of his was misplaced. It wasn't misplaced. You threw it in the trash and with it, our relationship. Oh, please. We had other problems. Or have you forgotten about Dave? Dave and I were co-workers and nothing more. Nothing more, right? Problem solved, everybody's friends. Let's go help Sharon. I would be happy to assist you if you will just admit, Raymond, that you threw my decoy in the garbage. That will never happen because it's not true. Thank you for nothing. Good day. Oh my god, there's a bomb in my chest. What? They put a bomb in my chest! What do we do? Uh, 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 uh. Wait a second. The sound's coming from my little watch. <laughs> I just assumed there was a bomb inside you? It says, take pill, right jacket, pup. I've never seen these before in my life. This was filled three days ago. This doctor must be treating you for your... Finding Dory disease. That's what most people call enterograde amnesia. Just, Just keep swimming. Exactly. That's what I tell my patients. Just keep swimming. So what do you think caused Pimento's memory loss? Probably years of repeated head trauma. I've been working as a neurologist for over two decades, and I have never seen a patient with more traumatic head injuries. Wow, well, it doesn't look so bad. The red is the good parts. Oh, my god. Philip Davidson. Detective Jake Peralta asked me to drop by. Mm, the dentist who murdered someone. Spoiler alert, they think you did it. Can you show him to interrogation room C, please? Have fun in there. Thank you. What are you smiling about? How uncomfortable this guy is. Jacked up the thermostat, got the table all sticky, made one of the chair legs too short, and worst of all, I had Gina greet him. What did you have her do? Be yourself. Poor son of a bitch. Damn, Neil deGrasse Tyson! How are you doing that? It's physics, Terry. It's physics. Okay, let's get to the table before David gets here. My mother loves an early bird. Hey, babe, before we go in, I know I said I was gonna do the whole hype man thing, but... I know. I shouldn't compare myself to my brother. We're all on our own journey. What? No, who told you that garbage? I was gonna say we need a backup plan so you can win this thing. If it starts slipping away, I'll pretend to choke, and then you give me the Heimlich and save my life in front of everyone. Oh, thanks for not trying to make me a better person. I love you. Love you too. Amy, Jake. David and I both arrived an hour early. We're sharing a French onion. Love him. So she's about to jump, and I say, hey, 
I can't tell you this world is a good place, but I guarantee you it's better with you in it. And she climbs down off the ledge and she gives me a big hug. Ugh. And that was before she won the Oscar? I don't know, I don't really follow pop culture. You never cease to impress me, David. Hey, speaking of impressive, Amy just went to the NYPD shooting range and received a gold certification in marksmanship. Oh, I just got the platinum certification. What, that exists? What did you do, curve the bullets wanted style? Yeah, I don't know what wanted is, I don't follow pop culture, but I fired 10 shots and they all went in the same hole. Oh, so you actually did. Uh, <clears throat> hey, Camilla, did you know that Amy is the youngest female sergeant in the history of the 99? Yes, I'm very proud of her. I'm proud of all my children, the sergeant and the lieutenant. <laughs> What? You passed the lieutenant's exam? It actually wasn't something I was planning on taking, but then my partner got sick and I wanted to be able to send home extra money to his wife and kids. Then I read the MRI. He was totally misdiagnosed. So, long story short, Bo is alive and I got a perfect score on a test for no reason. <sighs> man. Hey, check out these dinner rolls. Huh? Love these bad boys. I'm just gonna jump down on that recklessly. Oh, oh no! Jake, he's choking! Let David do it. He has the EMT training. I'm here for you, Jake. I'm gonna go to the bathroom. You know what? Boy, this is gonna hurt like hell. I think it's actually okay. I have 85. Do I have 90? I have 90 from the man with the face at table four. This is terrible. You don't know what you're doing. Adam Sandler? Yeah, that's right. I collect antiquities. I'm a serious person. I'm writing a movie right now about the Russian Revolution. Oh, really? Who does Kevin James play in it? Uh huh. It's a serious movie. Trotsky. Ah, there it is. But he's got a wife who never wears a bra. I think you're gonna like it. Thanks for dressing up, by the way. All right, back to this plate. I think you could use it for a variety of things. New item up there. Uh, how much you guys want to pay for me to stick my socks in this moron's mouth? I will. Did football legend Joe Theismann just bid $1,000 to put a sock in my mouth? You bet. OK, but let's get it going a little Seriously, higher. Seriously, back to the porno plate. Uh, 1200 bucks. Plate? Sock in the mouth. Third. Boom. OK, the idiot Good gets Greek the sock in the mouth. Boom. I'd say 1300 would be even better. 1300 Joe Theismann uh, coming in uh, store. I got 1300 25000 And a one. Oh, I got a two. And a boom. Sold to Joey Theismann.